The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I heard an incredible story from the Chavetz Chaim telling a certain person just an amazing, amazing message of the pride of what a Jew is, the dignity that, has to, that, has to, that he has to remember about himself all the times and how, again, it's about keeping the mitzvahs and about it gets down to the fundamental commitment to doing the right thing. And the story goes that apparently there was a... Uh, Rabbi Yisrael would not discourage people from going to America back in the 1800s. Of its time, lived, of course, mid, mid to late 1800s into 1933 when he passed away in his 90s, maybe even older. Somebody came to the Chavetz Chaim for bracha to go to America. And this must be late 1800s, 1880s or so. He gave, he asked him for bracha to go to America. And the Chavetz Chaim really was not excited to do it because he didn't really feel Jews should be going to America. He knew when he saw what happens in the early 1900s, late 1800s, when Jews went to America, we saw what happened. So many of them got lost. So many of them completely fell by the wayside. So he was not happy to give a bracha. And he said, you want a bracha? And he says, please, Rebbe, I need a bracha. He was a very sincere Jew, very honorable and, and very committed Jew. And he said, I'll give you a bracha if you give me a tkias kaf. Give me your hand. And as I hold your hand and you commit to me with that tkias kaf, that you will never, ever be mechal Shabbos. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to look me in the eye and tell me you will never be mechal Shabbos? And he says, Rebbe, he has the hand of the Kadosh Vitar, the Chavetz Chaim, surrounding his hand, and he grabs it, and he commits, and he says, Rebbe, yes, give me a bracha. I need to go to America, and I commit to you, I will never, ever break Shabbos. He says, okay. He gives him a bracha, they should be matzliach. And he goes, and I'm not sure how long he was there, but this person was very strong, and he committed and he had a certain job in a certain factory. He was doing quite well in this job. And the Baruch Hashem, he told him up front, I'm not gonna, I, I can't work on Shabbos. That was obviously the norm in those days. Very often people, literally, people or most of the FSA would literally go from job to job. This guy was working for a long time and he says, you know, I just got a new partner and we have a change of situation. It's worked for a while, but not anymore. If you want this job, you've got to work on Shabbos. I can't. You know I can't, I can't. I, I, work, I work double every single day. You know I can't work on Shabbos. Says, I'm sorry, you need to work on Shabbos. If you don't work on Shabbos, you don't have this job. That's it. He was heartbroken, but he says Friday came, and he says, you're coming tomorrow? I'm not coming tomorrow. And he lost the job. One week, one month, two months, he's looking, he cannot find a job. Cannot find a job and he's trying everywhere. And this was a well paying, solid job where he was able to take care of his family. Three months, four months go by, six months go by. And he's down literally, the, the, the cupboards are empty. He's scrounging around for any last possible morsel to be able to put a meal together, to put Shabbos together. He had not yet broken the deal. And he finished davening Shabbos six months pretty much later and he just he felt he felt broken he felt forlorn and he said you know I'm going I'm going to walk to that factory he was within walking distance I just said I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to tell him I'm going to come in to work next week and he walked to the factory and he was going up the steps and just as he was going up the steps just like we have situations where like Yosef HaTzadik saw the vision of Yaakov as he was about to fall prey to the temptations of Ashes Potiphar and the vision of Yaakov brought him back into reality, as this Jew is walking up the steps to that factory where he was going to basically forego and, and basically renege on, the, on his commitment, the vision of the Chavetz Chaim appeared to him. And that incredible face, the holiness, the feeling of his hands, all came back. The moment when he made the commitment to the Chavetz Chaim that he was never going to break Shabbos came back to him in its full impact. I can't do this. He turned around and he went home. Rabbi Isai, that night, so again, these are well-known stories, that night, two men, Motzah Shabbos, 
the Shabbos that he almost caved in, two men knock on the door. He opens the door and he sees his boss, and he sees another guy, and he says, what are you doing here? And he, uh, he invites him in. So he wanted to talk to you. He says, yes. He says, well, I need to tell you something. Six months ago, when I told you that we have a new boss, we have a new, uh, have a new partner, this is my partner. And at that time, he was very, very adamant. And he said, if people are going to work here, they need to work on Shabbos. We need to keep this factory pumping seven days a week. And I said, you're a good worker. And I told my partner, if we say that to this particular you, he's talking to the, if we say that to you, I knew that you weren't going to work. And he said, no, he's going to work. He's, he's, a, he's a guy, he still wants his money. It might take him a while. He'll leave right away, but he'll come back. Trust me, he'll come back. And I said, no, he won't. And they made a bet. And he says, you know, we made a bet with each other. And my partner bet me that he would, that you would indeed come back within six months. And it was a hefty sum of money that we bet. And I said, no, he won't. I have to tell you, that six-month bet ended today. And I need to tell you that because you did not ask me for that job, I took away your panosa for six months. I have money here to pay you for the six months that you didn't work. And because you taught both of us a lesson in dignity, in strength, in commitment, and what it is to be true to who you are as a Jew, I'm giving you the money from the bed as well, and that's a significant amount of money. We want you to come back, and I want to thank you, because I'm giving you this extra money because you taught us both an incredible lesson. And with that, he got his job back, and he was able to stay true to his commitment to the Chavetz Chaim. Rabbi Sai, this ha- happened to have a clear, happy ending six months later. Sometimes it's clear, sometimes it takes longer, and sometimes the, cl- the clarity only comes in the Olam Emes. But one thing we need to know, if we know who we are, when we know that we are Yisrael, we are the people who have fought against all adversity, and we, we've come up strong, we've come up proud, well, we know that we have to be distinct, and that's why we had to go down to Mitzrayim, because in, in, in Eretz Yisrael, we would have just been too comfortable, and we would have been immersed within the nations. By going down to Mitzrayim, we left as Kla Yisrael, not as a very nice, wonderful nation enmeshed within the rest of the nations of the world. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to Inspire.org.